This is ETF Edge. Once again, three of the best people in the business are joining us today. Ed Rosenberg from American Century, Todd Rosenblum from CFRA, Simeon Hyman from ProShare. Simeon, let me start with you. It's Amazon Prime Day tomorrow. You have two retail, retail ETFs that have done really well this year, but I want to get your thoughts on Amazon's Prime sale. Uh, there's reports out there we could be seeing 40% increase year over year uh, for them. Uh, it's going to be quite a day, but other people are out there as well trying to do the same thing, including their competitors. What do you see right now for the retail landscape? Look, the acceleration driven by the pandemic is well in hand and likely to continue. Uh, we saw a hockey stick in Q2. Uh, there was almost a 50 percent increase in online penetration overall. By the way, that was only from 11 percent of total sales online at the end of the year to 16 percent in Q2, a hockey stick, but earlier than people think. Here's why that, was, that uptick and that acceleration is likely to continue to be sticky and reflected both in Amazon and some of its key competitors. One is penetration across previously underpenetrated areas, like grocery. It may not be the hugest thing on Prime Day, but it's an important indication of what's going on here. There was almost no grocery even going into the end of last year, like 3% of total retail sales. That's now quadrupled. Uh, and so things that people never bought online, they're buying online now, and I yeah. think Prime Day is going to see an acceleration of that. From competitors, you see something interesting, too. There's stickiness. 70% of Chewy's business is subscription. So uh, you know, a bunch of that uptick they got in Q2 is likely to be sticky because they have ongoing relationships. And even in Etsy, 15% of Q2 was masked. So that's a very flexible platform. And as they've now yeah. entered the S&P 500, you can be sure they're going to try to convert that, those extra eyeballs into greater share of wallet and more mainstream opportunities. Simi, uh, Todd, what impresses me uh, is just the, the breadth of uh, availability for retail ETFs that you could have. And I mean, I'm talking about retail, the business retail. I don't mean retail trading ETFs. Besides uh, Simeon's, uh, we'll discuss in a minute, the ONLN, the online retail ETF. There's also his long online short stores one. There's the S&P Retail Index. There's the S&P uh, Retail ETF, XRT, which is more of an equal weight index. They're all doing well this year, although his strategy, Simeon's particular strategy of uh, clicks, C-L-I-X, of going uh, long online and short stores is up 82 percent. So it's quite a move here that we've seen. It seems like it's been a successful strategy this year, Todd. It certainly has. I mean, and Amazon is the juggernaut within the consumer discretionary space. Simeon talked about how it's gaining share and, and online spending is gaining share. It's Amazon is a 24% weighting in the ProShares online retail ETF, ONLN. It's about a 2.5% weighting within a competitor or a peer ETF from Amplify, I-B-U-Y, I buy. What's interesting, actually, is Fidelity has the largest weighting. Fidelity Consumer Discretionary ETF, FDIS, has more than 30% of its exposure to just Amazon. So, again, investors should know what's inside their portfolio, and it might surprise you how heavy the weighting in the Amazon has grown, given how well the stock has performed this year. And I think, I think the important here is you really have a wide choice here, like the S&P Retail Index, RLX, that's up 45%. That's essentially a market cap weighting of what's in the retail part of the S&P. But XRT is up 18%. That's like an equal weight. Um, uh, Simeon's ProShares Online Retail, uh, ONLN is up 89%. So, uh, Simeon, and Ed, weigh in if you have some thoughts here on retail. I'm just hitting up uh, Simeon here. But it seems like purely online actually would have been the perfect play for this year, although your strategy of long online and also shorting some stores, CLIX, in that particular strategy, also has done well. It's up 80, 82%. So you almost it's basically online is where you want to be at this point. No, I think that's right. And But in both sides are important. So the increasing penetration of online and the other side of the coin, the retail apocalypse, as people focus on, is important, too. And, you know, here, one of the takeaways uh, is well, one of the key points to, to observe is that it's not just the increase in the share of the wallet online, but the profitability thereof that we just talk about a lot. We talked about it a half hour ago on air, but 
um, Walmart has grown to be the number two player. So you say to yourself, okay, maybe this distinction doesn't matter anymore. Um, but if you look at profitability, their reward has been declining margins. And in, meanwhile, Amazon's margins have doubled over the same time period. So there are real hurdles, even for the select brick and mortar folks that you know, are making a decent go of it online. And your observation is spot on. Um, what we found uh, in the performance of ONLN, which is long only, and then clicks, which is 100 cents long and 50 cents short brick and mortar, you've actually gotten like over 90 percent of the long only returns with uh, a hunt with 50 cents short with clicks. So yeah. we're really proud of that opportunity offering you the uh, offering you both sides of the trade and the spread yeah. trade as well. And, and Bob, if um, I can add, you, you want to weigh in here and. Yeah, Go ahead, I mean, it, you see it, Bob, where you're seeing it, too, is it with active managers. I mean, if you look at one of our funds, Focus Dynamic Growth, within the last quarter, Amazon became the largest holding in the fund. So if you look at the 930 top 10 holdings, it's almost 9%. And it's not, you know, the growth trajectory in the portfolio is going up. And so I think the, even the active managers recognize that in the retail space, Amazon is the play right now. And I think the other thing they're looking at is, the down, downstream impact of something like an Amazon, because if you're buying online, where else does that impact? Right? And if you notice, and, and just using that fund as the example, one of the top 10 holdings is also MasterCard. And I think you're seeing some of the downstream impact of people using credit cards and seeing growth in that area as well, whether it's MasterCard, Visa, American Express, to take advantage of what's happening with Amazon and Prime Day, as well as being online.